tell you about the makeup palette that I'm using as well. I got this ages ago, about two years, so I'm not really sure if it's still available. For those of you listening in on audio, I'm holding what resembles a CD, like an old, you know, before you guys bought this shit and downloaded it on iTunes, there was this thing called a CD that was like a physical thing. So it's like an emulated uh, CD cover that says Rebel Rogue Labs, which is the brand, and it's called Suspended in Dusk, obviously typo negative. And all of the colors in here are song titles from Typo Negative. We've got October Rust, Green Man, Cinnamon Girl, Black Number One, mm, Hey Peter, <laughs> Bloody Kisses. I thought that was such a fucking clever idea. Honestly, I bought it just because I was a Typo Negative fan. But the quality is insane. Um, I'd never heard of the brand before, I'll be honest. Rebel Rogue Labs. Ah, that's an alliteration with a double R there, but the quality is really good. It's up there with Lime Crime. So if you are a type of negative fan, or even if you're not, if you just like um, really fluoro greens and a vibrant red eyeshadow, then check out this palette. I hope it's still available. Okay, books I'm reading this week that arrived. I have befriended a lovely man that is really into the occult and he's kind of taken me under his wing and is helping me down the right path in regards to what I should be learning first for what my interests are and I'm still kind of navigating through what they are. Um, so that's led me to The Lesser Key of Solomon. So that's one that I'm reading. He actually said that when I'm hanging out with him, there's two, two energies and he has made a little recording of which they are and he's asked me to read through this book and then see which two I connect with, which two sigils. Um, and I'm very intrigued to see, yeah, if uh, we ended up selecting the same. I mean, at that point, there's a little bit of clairvoyancy going on. How cool is that? <laughs> Uh, the second one here is Mastering Witchcraft, a practical guide for witches, warlocks, and covens. Looks like a good read. I used to um, read on Audible. I still do, but I really love um, with books where I'm, I'm more learning things uh, to be able to read at my own speed. If it's a podcast on, say, parenting where I can digest it um, a lot quicker, I don't mind the audio books. But, yeah, with things like that, I like to be able to um, bend the physical page or underline or highlight something that piques my interest. I don't know if you're the same. Yeah, the, the whole digital world, not having CD covers, not having physical books. I'm definitely a 90s baby. I would prefer to go back a few decades than where it seems that we're heading. <laughs> All right, I was going to talk about what I'm wearing, but that seems a little silly seeing I'm just in a swimsuit. Um, this actually doesn't have a brand. I know many of you might actually ask me. It was really cheap. Um, it was like $15. It was incredible. I'll try to find the link if I can, but I also bought it like three years ago. So there's a high possibility that it's just not available anymore. But yeah, I... I think it's super cute. For those of you listening, I'm describing a lovely red. <laughs> I need to it's like, sell it to you just via the audio. It's a lovely red open teardrop slut v-neck swimsuit that hugs the waist. You get it. If you want to see what it looks like, just head on over to YouTube and watch my podcast on YouTube rather than listening. But wherever you are, again, I welcome you here and it's really good to see you back. Fuck! <laughs> I literally said that looks so cool. I set my show notes on fire. My soul is on fire. Oh, you look so cool. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Okay, so moving on to my last point for today's podcast. This will be the big one. This is the one I'm going to, yeah, just like not really rant, but just I've got a lot to share on it as it's kind of based on personal experience. Um, the topic for this one is threefold. It's mental health, it's spirituality, and it's sexuality. A lovely little concoction there. <laughs> okay, so SSRIs, for those of you that don't know, they are a type of antidepressant. I'm openly very happy to say I've been on um, antidepressants since my mid-20s, which makes me yeah, kind of <laughs> go, why didn't I think that was a problem sooner? <laughs> I just kept taking the pill and got through life. Um, I, I definitely see them as a little bit of a band-aid rather than um, getting to the source of the actual problem. Um, so SSRI is an antidepressant. Um, I knew things like it would it would numb you, but I kind of took it like by taking this, it would it help you out of the numbness. Like it would help you get out of that depression. And I, I definitely feel them their assistance like when i take them i'm a little bit less anxious you know parenting gets a bit tricky or stressful as it can be i'm just able to like handle myself a little better than i normally would 
without it. But honestly, I've been on them for so fucking long. I can't remember myself without them. It's fair to say I don't even know myself without them. And that's a very uh, pivotal point that I'm making there. I've been on antidepressants for so long. Who the fuck am I without it? Being the optimist that I am, I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's exciting. Tell me more. <laughs> so with that in mind, I will use that as a segue to the next topic, which is I have a beautiful friend, a beautiful lover at the moment that is a holistic lifestyle coach. And he's helping me make certain improvements to make my life better as it is his his life's work to do that. And he suggested that I try reducing, if not eventually trying to completely get off SSRIs, my antidepressant. If you want to know, I'm on something called escitalopram, which is a very, very normal drug prescribed for mild depression. And I definitely went on it for that and stayed on it when I got postnatal depression from my two sons which I felt oh, just very guilty about getting, it made me feel like a bad mother for a little while. I don't know if you guys, any women out there, you guys, bad choice of words. If any women out there have, yeah, just felt that overwhelming sense of like a failure when you're like, shit, I've just made this kid and ah, oh, fuck, it's too difficult and it's hard and I feel defeated and deflated and just all of those. Um, and it fucking sucks that I need to take this pill to just be okay. Uh, it took me a long while to, to understand it's an imbalance and it wasn't quite my fault in regards to the, the, the way my body was reacting post-pregnancy or postpartum. So it went a little off topic, but basically my friend said that not only would it benefit me long term to reduce my antidepressant and I did this with the uh, approval of my GP so I didn't I don't in any way just recommend changing one's medication it was a very premeditated change within my um, regimen I guess my health regimen and it was to see if I could um, still be myself and manage my depression with a more holistic manner so I reduced it, but uh, <laughs> it leads it into the, the spiritual slash um, sexuality element that I'm going to speak about, which is he also said that it would be likely that my, let's say, sexual experiences would become much more significant with the SSRI being reduced. And I was like, what? <laughs> Come again? <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> That's funnily enough what we're speaking about. I'm like, what? I like I knew SSR, SSRIs, SSRI, fuck me, depressants were going to help me with uh, like getting through some tough shit and help me with my depression. And I knew, like I read the little pamphlet that it said, you know, it can um, suppress one's, what's the word? one's libido, but nowhere have I ever heard anyone say to me, it will actually change how you receive and perceive sex, like in your own body. Like it was very surprising for me to learn that it might, the SSRI might've been numbing a whole array of other things um, than just isolating the depression. I'm like, holy shit, wow. Like, and I'm, how much? And I don't know, maybe half. And I'm, are you fucking kidding me? We can increase this shit by 50% <laughs> by coming off this drug that I've been on for 15 years. So I'm like, damn, yes, okay, let's try that. And I gotta say, within like a week and a half, something quite um, remarkable happened for me. And this is where we're venturing into the realm of sexuality here. I always thought multiple orgasms were a myth. That something that happened in a Hollywood movie, or you know, when the, the moon is full or the sun is rising, you know, something really suited to romanticism and um, it's definitely sun setting, sun rising, the beach, fireworks going off, and oh, multiple orgasms. Like it doesn't actually happen. In fact, they were so, far removed from my reality, it didn't seem like a real thing. That, that, that's, I'm trying to explain how, how far removed that concept was from my reality. So when I almost like spontaneously combusted after reducing uh, my depression pills into that state, we're very easily being able to have multiple orgasms. Um, that surprised the hell out of me. And although this is a uh, very different topic that I think 
any YouTubers in the alternative world would be speaking about. I wanted to touch on it, even though it, it uh, gives me a little bit of apprehension because I don't want to be, um, the, I don't want sexuality to be the focal point of this podcast, but I do want to be able to touch on it as well. I do believe that the only way I can truly step into my own power, my sovereignty and sexuality is to be able to speak about it authentically um, on this podcast. I don't want to just be like, yeah, I have sex. Um, and that's all we're going to say about it because that, that <laughs> that's not being authentic to who I am. So it's in no way um, trying to be crass or overtly sexual. I think it's actually educational. Like how many of you comment down below have been on like me, antidepressants possibly your whole fucking life like I'm telling you like wow there, there could be a window to you having like this sexual awakening um, just from trying to remove yourself off that again go to your doctor I'm not a doctor see if it's an option it may not be an option for you but I'm also exercising more I'm eating better there's a whole array of other um, lifestyle changes that have happened um, when I think about it, so it's not just specifically that, but there was a specific enough connection to say, wow, I stopped this and then this started happening. Um, I've also been reading a lot that's going to the spiritual side of it on surrendering within um, one's sexuality. And I, um, it was brought to my attention that I was, it doesn't surprise me because I am a little bit of a control freak. Yeah, just holding on a little more instead of surrendering into certain moments. And, um, if I can, yeah, share any advice with you tonight, if you're on a, a spiritual journey yourself or you're looking to um, increase intimacy, be it with yourself or with a partner, try um, just relaxing into the actual experience. I found that in itself, just surrendering to the thought of surrendering was enough surrender to make <laughs> to make some shit happen differently it's quite remarkable it's and it's really exciting because i'm like wow what else can i change what else do i need to relive and experience now that like my perception system is online let's say i kind of feel like my my bandwidth uh has been limited and by going off this this uh depressant or reducing um yeah i'm mean, just experiencing so much more which makes sense once you say it like that, but I, yeah, I thought it was a fucking interesting story. Um, so yeah, if I change anyone's um, sex life <laughs> for the better, that's so beautiful. Please comment down below and yeah, let me know if you've had um, a similar experience. Have you been on uh, antidepressants your whole life? Uh, yeah, fuck, let's talk about that. All right, I'm gonna play you guys a little song I've been working on. It's entitled Cruel. It's not finished yet, like a lot of my works, but I'm really enjoying it. sex blood and rock and roll please remember to subscribe like and comment share the video with or podcast i should say with anyone you think would really like it and comment down below i will be interacting and i'd like to hear what you'd like to see in the next video see you guys soon bye